April 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 2 from the New Testament. Now when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like violent wind blowing came from heaven and filled the entire house where they were sitting, and tongues spreading out like fire appeared to them and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven residing in Jerusalem. When this sound occurred, a crowd gathered and was in confusion, because each one had heard them speaking in his own language. Completely baffled, they said, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that each one of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and the province of Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own languages about the great deeds God has done. All were astounded and greatly confused saying to one another, What does this mean? But others jeered at the speaker, saying, They are drunk on new wine. But Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed them. You men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem know this, and listen carefully to what I say. In spite of what you think, these men are not drunk, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what was spoken about through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it will be, God says, that I will pour out my spirit on all people, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And I will perform wonders in the sky above and miraculous signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will be changed to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man clearly attested to you by God with powerful deeds, wonders, and miraculous signs that God performed among you through him, just as you yourselves know. This man who was handed over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you executed by nailing him to a cross at the hands of Gentiles. But God raised him up, having released him from the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held in its power. For David says about him, I saw the Lord always in front of me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My body also will live in hope. Because you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of joy with your presence. Brothers, I can speak confidently to you about our forefather David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. So then, because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath to seat one of his descendants on his throne, David, by foreseeing this, spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was neither abandoned to Hades nor did his body experience decay. This Jesus God raised up and we are all witnesses of it. So then, exalted to the right hand of God and having received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, he was poured out what you both see and hear. For David did not ascend into heaven, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know beyond a doubt that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were acutely distressed and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, What should we do, brothers? Peter said to them, Repent, and each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
for the promises for you and your children and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. With many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this perverse generation. So those who accepted his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 people were added. They were devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Reverential awe came over everyone, and many wonders and miraculous signs came about by the apostles. All who believed were together and held everything in common, and they began selling their property and possessions and distributing the proceeds to everyone, as anyone had need. Every day they continued to gather together by common consent in the temple courts, breaking bread from house to house, sharing their food with glad and humble hearts praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number every day those who were being saved. God, it was interesting. I was studying about the word proselytes that's in our reading tonight. And basically, a proselyte is a Gentile who converted to Judaism. And then we see them become Christians. Uh, in this particular chapter. But I found it interesting. Uh, the Jewish community at that time had two types of proselytes. Um, a righteous proselyte, which was, again, a Gentile who converted to Judaism. Um, but they were bound by all the doctrines, all the laws, all the precepts of the Jewish economy is what it said. Uh, and considered a full member of the Jewish people. Um, they were circumcised as adults when they became a righteous proselyte. Um, and they could also partake in the Passover Jewish sacrifice, the meal. Then there was something else called a gate proselyte, uh, considered a resident alien. Uh, they lived with everyone else, but they only followed some of the customs. They didn't have to be circumcised. They didn't have to to abide by all of the rules in the Torah. Uh, they were given uh, seven rules to abide by. Uh, to not worship idols. To not blaspheme God's name. To not murder. Uh, to not commit immoral sexual acts. To not steal. To not tear the limb from a living animal. And to not fail to establish courts of justice. To be assured of a place in the world to come. Hmm. So... <laughs> I'm reading this beautiful chapter in Acts, chapter 2, where it talks about us, God's children, being chosen by him uh, to receive his love, his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, uh, his Holy Spirit. We were chosen by him to receive these things. Yet on the flip side, I think about that. Just because I've had this discussion, God, as you know, with so many people about um, God can't choose whether we're going to be saved or not. We choose it, which is a bunch of malarkey if you read the Bible. But I think about that a lot. At what point do you decide to uh, change somebody's heart and mind? Because when we're saved, it's a complete transformation. I loved reading that part where this amazing transformation took place with all these people and suddenly they didn't want any material possessions. They wanted to worship you all day long. They wanted to be with other people who were worshiping you all day long. It's actually kind of easy to see who would be the righteous proselyte, right? The people who would love to go to church 24 seven, if given a choice, the people who um, get annoyed with other things in their life because all they want to do is read your word. All we want to do is just worship you. And yet then we have the gate Christian. <laughs> who's probably not Christian all. He's probably not saved. He or she's probably not saved at all. Who's kind of winging the rules. Picking and choosing what they want. Maybe not even seven of them. Uh, they live by the customs of the land. So they might go to church on Sunday. They might talk a good game but their heart isn't really changed you can see this outward appearance 
how they treat other people, the things they surround themselves by, habitual sin in their life. Boy, that was me, God. I was such a gate proselyte. I was such a gate Christian. You know, I used to swear for a long time that I was saved during that time, but I highly doubt it now. Nor does it matter anymore because you have my heart. But I think a lot about at what point do you choose us? Some people go their whole life having to live without you. And then two seconds before they die, they're saved. Um, other people seem to be saved when they're they're quite young and they carry that faith with them through their whole life and get to do all these amazing things for you, God. And there's people like me who live in the world half of their life. And it takes somebody like me that long to figure out that there's more to this life than me, <laughs> than my selfish desires. And I uncover this amazing world and this new heart that you give me. So at what point do you choose people? And why, for some of us, do you choose to wait? Because we have a lot of lessons to learn, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I'm not questioning you. It's just something that I, obviously, I'm not questioning you. It's just something I think about. It's hard, it's hard being where I'm at now with this incredible peace and love that I have for you and watching people who are hour and 15 minute Christians once a week and they go on the rest of their life throughout the rest of the week and, and they watch inappropriate TV and, and attend inappropriate movies and have inappropriate conversations and do inappropriate things. And I know because I was there and I did those things. <laughs> At the time, I don't think anybody could have talked, to, talked me out of it. But somewhere in there, you got hold of my heart and you changed my heart and you changed my mind. I was blessed to confess my sins to you, knowing that that forgiveness would wash me pure. I knew that I wanted to get baptized when that happened. Not because baptism saves me, but because it's an outward expression of what's going on in my heart, of how much my heart is changing. Just like I mentioned before, you can see a true Christian by what they do, by how they respond to people. You can only fake it so much in front of people before some of the stuff gets squishy and comes out the sides. God, today I just pray that people who are still in that squishy phase that I was in for such a long time, that they just find their way to you. And maybe that's the point where, where you choose us. When you see something change in us, you see some sort of reaching out for that incredible gift that you give us. I don't know. But whatever it is, and whoever needs to hear this today, and more importantly, whoever needs you in their lives, which is everybody, just allow them to so clearly see you offering that gift to them. Allow them to confess their sins so that they can be washed by your forgiveness. Have them be excited about getting baptized because it's an outward expression of what's going on in their heart right then. Follow through with what they do when nobody's looking. That their heart is so filled with love like the people uh, in Acts chapter 2 where they just get rid of material things and all they want to do is care for people and love them. Just like your son commanded us to. God, I still don't get, nor probably will I ever, get everything about what you talk about in the Bible. I suspect for the rest of the time here on earth, we will always argue about predestination and the elect and the fact that you choose us and how does that process work. And I think that all that really matters to me is... 
I'm so blessed and so grateful and so thankful that my heart is overflowing, that I am not a gate Christian anymore, that I am a righteous Christian. That still doesn't sound right, but I am a person who is in love with you uh, passionately. And I honestly wish that I could just worship you all day long, all night long. And I know there's going to come a time where you're going to call me back up into heaven. And I get to do that to you, for you, with others. And that's going to be kind of crazy awesome, God. Ah, I can't wait. Thank you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.